But first, I want to start off this show by talking about one of the most egregious overreaches I've witnessed by a statutory body, an arm of the government. Former NBA player Andrew Bogut made headlines last week after he received a legally threatening letter from the Victorian Electoral Commission for tweeting out a video criticising the state's controversial pandemic laws. Lying, cheating, stealing taxpayers' money, destroying Victoria. When it comes to corruption, the Victorian government is all in it together. Now, the Electoral Commission didn't like that at all. This bloke, Keegan Bartlett from the Victorian Electorate Commission, didn't like the video because Andrew's tweet wasn't what they describe as being authorised. He cannot publish his opinion, supposedly, if that opinion can influence an election, unless he includes his name and address on the publication. So Bartlett sends Andrew this outrageously worded letter warning he could be prosecuted if he publishes his opinion again without the required authorization statement. Now, Andrew appears on this channel regularly as a media commentator, and he's been fairly critical of the Victorian government, but he is just a regular person who has an opinion and thinks critically about issues and wants to voice this opinion in the media. He is not a politician. He is not from any party, but still the Electoral Commission wants him to authorise himself and carry disclaimers on his digital, digital communications or risk being prosecuted. Now, authorisation means Andrew would have to publish his name at the end, name and address at the end of every form of political communication online. So what does Andrew Bogart think about all this? I'm not registered to be a politician. I couldn't give um, two hoots about politics at the moment, to be honest. Um, but if I can't, as an Australian, as a Victorian, criticise a government with whatever means necessary and whatever means I want to do as a free citizen, we're in some big, big trouble. And whether you agree with my views or not is a separate issue. Just think about if your brother, your sister, your husband, your, you know, your child puts out something on their Facebook page regarding you know, a, a, a Premier or a Prime Minister and they get one of these letters, is that acceptable? Is that what we're, what we're thinking is normal in Australia? And uh, my answer is no, and I'd, I'd, I'd probably think most people's answer would be no. Now, this is disturbing stuff. So we asked the Electoral Commission's senior media and communication advisor, Ruth Murphy, how they could possibly justify sending such an aggressively worded letter, and she refused to answer three simple yet crucial questions. Firstly, what prompted the Victorian Electoral Commission to investigate Andrew Bogart's social media post? Secondly, did any representative of the Andrews government complain about the post in any capacity? Third, how many legal threats of this nature have been sent by the VEC in the last 12 months? You deserve to know answers to those questions, and Ruth is paid to provide those answers to the public and to the media by extension. But instead of doing her job, she put out a press release titled, No Special Treatment for Media Personalities, and then it included this insane explanation. If a person publishes that opinion and it is intended or likely to affect how a person votes in an election, it must be properly authorised. That's the law, and it applies to all of us, whether they be a media personality, a member of the public, political party, or a candidate in an election. Well, Ruth, if you genuinely believe those two sentences, then every single person on Twitter who tweets political opinions about Victorian politics would be getting sent these letters. They are not. Instead, the threats are reserved for a conservative-leaning former athlete who has been a thorn in the Andrews government side. Either the law is being applied inconsistently or it has been applied incorrectly. But we don't know because of their culture of secrecy. We don't know if a complaint came from the Andrews government, and we don't know how many Australians have been threatened in this manner before for just sharing an opinion. But I promise you, we're going to find out. We've put in a very detailed Freedom of Information request to the Victorian Electoral Commission, and I will bring you updates on this show as soon as we have them. Well, let's bring in the panel. I'm joined by lawyer and commentator Caroline DeRusso and media writer at The Australian, Sophie Ellsworth. Now, Sophie, this is your state, and if this really is the law, why do all of these crazy activists not have to authorise their opinion? Why is it a conservative athlete who is getting this kind of threatening correspondence? 
Oh, Jack, I thought this was absolutely outrageous, uh, what was done here to Andrew Bogart. I mean, they've singled him out. Now, he's got a very high profile. He has 400,000 odd followers on Twitter. But nevertheless, there's a lot of people on that social media platform that voice their political opinions. And to single him out, I thought was completely unfair. Uh, and, and totally an overreach and quite concerning for our democracy. Uh, frightening, in fact, that this is the action that could be taken uh, against Andrew, which could result in fines and I believe even potentially prison time if it got, if it got down yes, to that. Uh, this is extremely concerning, concerning, Jack, and something that anyone on social media, I mean, why aren't they other people getting letters? And very well done to your team to put in these questions to find out how many other people have got letters that Andrew got? Because a lot of people shared that video that Andrew shared and it appears that they did not receive the same letter. Yeah, and Sophie, another point I'll make is you've got activists on Twitter such as PR Guy, these anonymous trolls who are constantly weighing politically into the debate. Supposedly, the law is saying that they should be authorising these statements, declaring their name. Apparently, it's actually illegal, but no one is chasing them up. Well, look, as I said, Jack, this is a targeted uh, approach to, you know, take a hit on Andrew Bogart. But anyone that knows Andrew Bogart uh, knows that he completely speaks his mind. In fact, he's one of the few sportsmen out there who uh, is able to speak his mind. I mean, he's got more money than most of us could dream of. Uh, he's not affiliated with any political party. And I think good on Andrew for voicing his opinions and he should not be silenced. I think this is very concerning, Jack. And he won't. He's told me he will keep fighting it, so we'll work with him on that. Now, Caroline, I'm interested in your perspective from, from a legal point of view. Obviously, you're the only one really qualified on this, you know, on this show right now to talk from that perspective, but do you think that the law has been applied correctly in this instance? Well, like with any law, Jack, it actually comes down to whether it's enforced or not. And um, I think in this circumstance, I, I would say that the law has been applied too broadly. Um, as you said, he is a private citizen. He often gives his opinion just like other people do. He just happens to be reasonably influential. Um, and, and as you said, has been a thorn in, in the Andrews government side. But the fact of the matter is here, the, the bit that I, well, to be quite honest, thoroughly enjoyed was I think the Electoral Commission just totally miscalculated the strategy on this. This is actually more interesting from a strategic point of view. Did they actually think that by sending that letter they were going to shut him up? <laughs> right? That there, that's the fabulous bit. But they did. They totally miscalculated it. He flipped them the bird. It ended up on the front page of the paper. It ended up going viral. And then they had to come out and explain themselves. And it's the explanation, like you said earlier, which was just absolute garbage. And the bit that I really... Um, the line that I found interesting was the one that said, well, we need to have the authorisation so we know the person providing the opinion. Well, it was on his private Twitter. Yes. <laughs> he tweets regularly. Everyone knows it was him. It's not like he was, it's under some pseudonym or some, you know, organisation name where there needs to be attached to an individual. It was just him. We all know it was him, that there was never um, in question. So really, I think the Electoral Commission has shot themselves in the foot. The initial, um, the initial, you know, having a crack at Andrew Brogert was stupid and the explanation was even more stupid. I couldn't agree more. And when I'm asking a question, who complained, the fact that they just declined to answer that I don't know, Andrew, Andrew Bogart believes that it was the government. He believes it was the Andrews government that has made, made an informal complaint and that's why they've investigated it. The fact they won't deny that, we'll find out when this FOI comes back, won't we? They can't hide that.